Okay, here's a dynamics problem that I'd say is probably a little bit harder to get your head around. But let's say that we have a mass big M like this and a mass little m like this. And we're going to push on little m with a force F1 so that it starts to move in this direction. And simultaneously, we're going to push on mass M, big M, with the force of F2 in this direction. And what happens is there's friction between the surfaces here, uh, both between big M and the, and the plane on which all this rests, and uh, friction between little m and big M. The coefficient of friction, sliding friction, in all cases, mu is equal to 0.2. And I've listed over here what the masses are. Mass, one kilogram for the little one, six kilograms for the big one. And we're going to say that G is 9.81 meters per second squared. The problem is to calculate what the accelerations are. In other words, they're not going to accelerate at the same rate. This one's going to slip on top of this one. And this one's going to accelerate at a, a different rate. We're going to call the one, the top one A1 and the bottom one A2. So here's how to look at this. First of all, we're going to assume that the top mass is slipping in this direction uh, with respect to the big mass. So there's a force due to friction resisting that motion back in this direction that I'm going to call little f1, the frictional force in that direction. The force that's causing this object to accelerate in this direction is the component parallel to the plane of f1. That's this force right here. And this force right here is f1 times the cosine of theta, where theta is equal to uh, 36.87 degrees. All right, so we can write an equation for the net force acting on little m, and that's just going to be F1 cosine theta minus little f1. In other words, I can write that F net from Newton's second law, I can write that F1 cosine theta minus little f1, that's f net in this dimension, is equal to little m times a1. What about f1? f1 is just the frictional force, and the frictional force little f1 is equal to mu, the coefficient of sliding friction, times the normal force, which I'm going to call f sub n, 1. The normal force acting along this dimension. The normal force is going to be equal to uh, the weight, little mg, like that, plus this component of F1. Since we're pushing down on this thing, that means the big block will be pushing back up in this direction. This is going to be F1 or F subnormal 1. And F subnormal 1 is going to be equal to just little mg plus F1 sine theta. F1 sine theta. like that. So then we can write that F1 cosine theta minus mu times mg plus F1 sine theta is equal to little m times A1. If I divide through by m, I can put a, a divide through by m. I get rid of that one, put an m there, and put an m here. And now I have that a1 
I'm going to have to pull move this. Well, let me write it over here. A1 is equal to F1 over little m times cosine theta minus mu times g plus F1 over m times sine theta. I could do a little more algebra and simplify this a little bit, but I have what I'm looking for, the acceleration of the top block. So I'll plug in the numbers. Let me move this up just a little bit so we can see it. There. So A1 is equal to F1, which is 50, divided by 1, 1 kilogram is little m, times the cosine of this angle, 36.87 degrees, minus mu, which is 0.2, times G, which is 9.81, plus F1, which is 50, divided by 1, times the sine of 36.87. And when you work all that out in your calculator, I've already done it, so I'll just write down the answer. It turns out to be 32.04, 32.04, meters per second squared and that's what a1 is okay to figure out what uh, a2 is the acceleration of block big m here let me move this down where we can see it a little better this one is a little bit trickier because we have to look at what's happening well, what are the forces acting on big m well looked at from the standpoint of this block moving forward with respect to that block, then the frictional force F1 points back in this direction. But just looking at it from the standpoint of big mass, big M, then F1 points in this direction. So I can also write F1, I'll, let me do it like this, I'll put it here, F1, little f1, is also pushing in this direction because this mass is what's touching the big one. So it's pushing in that direction as well. So I have this force trying to move it to the right and this force trying to move it to the right. And then I have another force back in this direction, little f2, which is equal to the coefficient of sliding friction times the normal force in that case. So I can write F net equals MA for the bottom part. Let me move it up where I can have some room to do that. I can write the bottom part then as F2. Here, let me make a line between these. F2 plus little f1 minus little f2 is equal to M times A2. I already know from what I've calculated before that F1, I'll write it again, F1 is equal to mu times little mg plus F1 sine theta. And F2 now, F2 is going to be equal to mu times the normal force F sub n2, but F sub n2 is going to be equal to, first of all, let me go back up here so you can see it, it's going to have the weight in this direction, this is not the scale of course, this is big mg, but also the mass little m is pushing down on this whole thing, so I'm going to have in addition to that little mg and I'm going to have this component of the force F1 pushing down so that F normal 2, F normal 2 is going to be equal to the downward forces, which are big MG plus little MG plus F1 sine theta. 
that means then that little f2 is equal to mu times big M G plus little m g plus f1 sine theta. So I can rewrite the second law then as f2 plus f1 from this term right up here. That's mu times little m g plus f1 sine theta plus, uh, correction, that's minus, minus mu, this is F2, mu times big MG plus little MG plus F1 sine theta. All of that is equal to big M times A2. So I'm going to simplify this a little bit do a little bit of algebra here and I'm going to write it all out as F2 plus mu times little mg plus mu times F1 sine theta minus mu times mg minus mu times little mg minus mu times F1 sine theta is equal to big M times A2. But look, I have a plus mu M1 uh, correction, uh, mu F1 sine theta, and a negative one here, so that these two cancel each other out. I also have a mu little mg and a minus mu little mg, so these two cancel each other out. And what I'm left with is F2 from that term, minus mu times big MG from that term is equal to M times A2, or A2 then is equal to F2, that's F2 over M minus mu times G. My handwriting is getting a little bad here, but anyway, a2 then is equal to F2, and F2 is 80 newtons divided by M, which is 6 kilograms, big M, minus 0.2 times 9.81, and that works out to be 11.37 meters per second squared. 11.37 meters per second squared. This is equal to A2, and those are the two things that we were looking for, A1 and A2. A1 is 32.04 meters per second squared, and A2 is 11.37 meters per second squared.